thoughts on The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 7, Chapter 23, The Spies. So, spoilers for basically everything Star Wars leading up to, including this. So, yeah, we open with more KDM O'Brien, and yeah, uh, great to see her, and I, I appreciate now we're getting confirmation, you know, there were theories that she is working, you know, to, to, that she is still a fascist, and yeah, this, this confirms it, and in this, I'm not certain if this is supposed to be the same Hux as in the movies, but there's one of the shadow, um, council people, is named Hux according to the the subtitles it might be like his father because Hux is already pretty young in the and this is before but but yeah you know so so yeah this is definitely the the first order and the, the you know they have a an imperial probe droid to to scan and she also has to give a password and then she can speak to Moff Gideon. And we find out that the pirates that attack Navarro were sent by... Let's see, so they're, they're going to become the First Order. Let's call them First Order Alpha. Alpha Alpha. You know, Alpha Alpha were basically using pirates as brown shirts. And... You know the the these officers they talk about they're posing as warlords, you know, so that the republic don't realize that there's a you know that they are a united front that they're a much bigger enemy, much more dangerous enemy. And you know they mention that Thrawn, you know, uh, Gideon says that he doesn't believe that Thrawn is coming because they keep talking about him, but he's never seen, you know, Pixar didn't happen, and yeah, this leads very nicely into, you know, fairly recently we got the, we got a, another trailer for, or another, whatever, we got a trailer for Ahsoka, where Thrawn is, you know, seemingly going to return, so yeah, this is going to lead very nicely into the, that show, and yeah. And, yeah, we, we learned that this Hux is obsessed with clones, which is, of course, how we get Snoke. And the... let's see... I, yeah, because, you know, people were already theorizing the, the... these, you know, Imperials doing research on Grogu and, like, you know, yeah, there were already theories, oh, this is going to lead to Snoke. They're going to, you know, get... The, the forced midichlorians, you know, from Grogu create Snoke, who can also use the Force. And now we learn that Gideon himself doesn't particularly care. But, you know, it's part of this overall thing, so he'll go along with it, sure. <clears throat> and Gideon, tell, you know... There, so the Mandalorians continue to be an issue, one of the officers asks. And, uh, you know, Gideon says that, you know, yes, I am becoming increasingly confident that we're on their show rather than they are on ours. And, yeah, so the, the Mandalorians are, you know, they never met before. Everything they've heard about each other, they hate. So it's the real world Mandalorian edition, basically. And IG-11 is now IG-12, a vehicle, not a droid. And Taika Waititi, you know, like, did they legit, or did they use old recordings, maybe? Did they legit bring him into the, the sound booth just to record himself saying yes and no over and over? That seems very, like... I mean, it, w it was even the same yes and the same no each time. It's not like I am group where each time, you know, Vin Treasel says it, it's a different... Yeah. And the, you know, the Anzellian remembers 
you know, the same species as Babu Frick, remembers that Grogu picked one of them up and squeezed. So he says, bad baby, no squeezy. And, yeah, you know, <laughs> so at first, the, the basically, you know, Grogu just has IG-12 say yes and no, like, a couple of times. But then it just keeps saying yes over and over, and... You know the the they yeah they walk out of High Magistrate uh, Grief Karga's office and you know it's grabbing food which is exactly what a you know very very small child would do if not you know if if able to and if if it doesn't yet understand that you can't just do that and you know when when. It won't, you know. It even plays keep away with the the fruit and squeezes it and it sprays onto the the guy's face. And yeah, so the 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 two different groups of Mandalorian eat together and are very suspicious of each other. I will go. I will go. I'm Spartacus. I swear. This episode, like, did the did the writer like? realized the script was too short so he just wrote okay uh yes 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 no 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 i will go i will go i will go and then later you have the yeah they yell go 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 and it's just yeah it's, yeah if it's not coming through i am still i absolutely love this episode this show in general and i really like the the old timey ship you know with with like Ah, uh, what, what are those called again? Wind sails, I guess. It's been a while since I thought about sh old timey ships, and just yeah, that was that was really cool. And we get the the story of the the surrender, and yeah, you know, Gideon. The more we learn about him, the more we despise him. And you know, the, the yeah, the the um. I guess I'll call them surface Mandalorians because we are now dealing with three different groups of Mandalorians in this episode. But yeah, the surface Mandalorians, not only will they help them look for the Great Forge, they know where it is. You know, and since they, you know, they know where it is, but they haven't, you know, no Mandalorian has gone down there in a really long time. So, you know, when they do go down there, they, they you know, all the Imperials are, are there. And the, the you know they're playing. I mean, it's it it seems like chess, and the you know not not the the kind of chess that's on the Millennium Falcon. The 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 um what's it called? The holographic chess, but a different game of chess. And apparently, they know that they use different rules, and like. Vizsla is is like you know I I do want to briefly say since this might be the last time I talk about Paz Vizsla since he dies this episode I really appreciate like one of his ancestors was pre Vizsla Paz Vizsla is close enough to post Vizsla that I can can appreciate that uh, yeah anyway the the you know he's like you will you will submit or you will fight and yeah pretty cool fight and you know it's this thing of well you know if if Mandalorians from either side step in you know it's that's gonna I mean basically if the, the way I understand it is basically that it would seem like they're doubting that their friend can win you know they're they're taking away this honorable fight and grogu steps in and din says i didn't teach him that so you know that's i guess either something inborn to the yoda species or maybe it was something that he learned from the yet to be recast luke you know so yeah that's does a good little detail and massive creature absolutely love it and it destroys the um, the ship 
and yeah, a bunch of Imperials with um, with with um, jetpacks and Beskar, and you know, I yeah, I really appreciate. It. Like, so basically, it's. It's a bit of a numbers issue, and also just the, you know, so the surprise and the the uniformity of the, the that allows the Imperials to at least temporarily gain an upper hand, and then you have the, you know, some some close up fighting, and you know, some of our Mandalorian, yeah, some of the Mandalorians managed to take out some of the Imperials by targeting weak spots, because all armor has weak spots. It's not going to be, you know, like, if the, like, for example, like, the the neck part has to be, you know, it can't, it can't be solid metal, or they can't move their heads, you know, without moving the rest of their bodies. It would be like, you know, pre-Nolan Batman. So, you gotta, yeah, you, you have to have some, and it's also like, I mean, if your enemy can get close enough to stab you in the neck, yeah, you you have a problem at at that point, you know, and it's time to admit it. So so yeah, I I quite appreciate that. I will say the moment that the the Imperials retreated, I was like, this is gonna be a trap, isn't it? But I mean, Mandalorians like bound by honor. I'm not sure they're allowed to not pursue a retreating enemy, you know. So and and I like this detail that at the very very end. You know when when Paz Vizsla is the the uh, what's it called? He is in the um yeah he's you know he he locks the door behind him so that he can stay behind. You know he he starts he tries to break the right guys and they have these weapons that can actually penetrate Beskar armor. And you might be wondering why didn't they give those to the Imperials in the in the cave, you know, in the Great Forge? Well, they were trying to lure them in. You know, they, they had just enough force that the Mandalorians wouldn't be like, okay, this smells like a trap. It seemed like, okay, no, they thought they were going to win here. And they're retreating. Okay, I guess we can, you know, it must not be a trap. We must have actually surprised them by how capable we are, you know. If they brought out that kind of stuff, you know, they they were looking to capture Din Djarin. I, I guess in general they were they were basically they were probably they would probably also have been very happy if they could capture Bo Katan. Yeah, because he tries to to goad her into coming out with the with the saber. You know, they basically they wanted to take out the the leaders of the Mandalorians. And yeah, I, I really appreciate you know it's it's Din Djarin being caught. It's one of those scenes where it's like okay, we've seen him fight his way out of so many situations. Is it going to be credible, or are we just gonna sit back and it's like okay, that's not I don't buy it. He wouldn't have gotten caught. And I felt like they made it you know sufficiently credible. And yeah, Gideon comes in in, in dark trooper armor and he says you know, to send the interceptors and the bombers to destroy the, the ships. I really appreciate, like, this is a great cliffhanger. We don't know if the ships, if the Mandalorian ships are going to be able to withstand interceptors. And I mean, honestly, if Bo-Katan gets word back to them, I think there's a chance, because they do have, you know, ex-Imperial, you know, ships. So I, th I think there's a chance. And you have the, you know, Din has been caught. Moff Gideon knows the the, you know, that the Mandalorians have been, you know, re reformed. Like the the Mandalorians don't have the the, what's it called? The um, element of surprise on them. So then. I, I gotta say, when, when Bo-Katan, like, she doesn't even speak that loudly, and, like, there's a closed door behind, I, I know there's a little bit of glass, but glass isn't a great, you know, doesn't, doesn't transmit sound that well compared to, like, just empty, you know. So, yeah, when, when, you know, Bo-Katan speaks up and Moff, like, turns to her, like, I was half expecting him to say, 
I, I can't hear you. We're too far apart. And you're not. You got to speak up. And yeah. Fall back. There's too many of them, Sid. And I do appreciate that the, the gun eventually did get too hot for Paz Vizsla to keep. And it's also, you know, if you got to take out such a cool character, you know, have him be really badass in his last stand, you know. And yeah, like, there, there was like a second where I was like, is that thing never going to run out of ammo? But I mean, it's like, this is Star Wars. There's some chance that the thing that it's hooked up to is not like, a power, just a power source, which is a, you know, if in the real world, if there's, you know, there's a, or I suppose it, it might depend on the Gatling gun, but some of them, it's at least in part a battery because that thing, for for it to spin and spin that fast, spin that for so long, it needs battery power. But you know, yeah, this thing on his back might actually be creating ammo, but it does eventually overheat. And let's see. Yeah. You know, it's you you know, it's things have gotten serious in Star Wars when the Imperial red guys come out. And yeah, I I thought I recognized Carl Weathers. The the end credits confirmed that is indeed him. So yeah, that is, you know, once you're in Disney, they're going to keep giving you, you know, it's it's not quite like, um, ah, I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. Um, I will have it momentarily because she was on Willow and her name is Erin Kellyman. You know, she's in three different Disney things. Let's see, so I... It's, there's probably others that are also in, but but yeah, you know, she's in three, Tony Revolori is in at least two, and yeah, n now... Carl Weathers is also in at least two, so that's really cool. You know, and it's I. I've never really understood why some people feel the need to like. You know, obviously, as many actors should have work as uh, you know as possible as their talents and such. You know, I personally think that the ones who can't get work, you know, we should still take care of them. Just you know, tax cuts for the rich, trim the ridiculously bloated. U.S. military budget and and provide some, but yeah, like once you have some actors who are incredibly talented in like a studio, I just feel like it makes a lot of sense to to keep giving them work within the the same, uh, you know. But yeah, um, yeah, that's it. So, dang, Farrick, I am excited to see how this season ends and. Yeah, absolutely love this episode, and yeah, this this might be my favorite episode this season. So, yeah, catch you next time.